So now we've installed and tested our Zappi 2 charging device, we're going to have a look at how we can tweak some of those critical settings to make sure that the Zappi 2 is right for the installation that it's been put into. So Gary, what's the first thing that we're going to change on our Zappi 2 charger? So let's just start off something rather simple. We've got the date and time there. If we wanted to change them, we go into the menu. So these arrows here will move us up and down. To start with, we're going to need to move down. And if we go in this case down to other settings, Press effectively an enter button or a confirm button. And then we see date and time. We go in there and obviously now we can navigate through those. So as we want to move through up and down them. And then we can move across and then obviously we can change them using these here. So we go up and down in order to select our functions. Move across and then come down again. And, and likewise move across and up and down in order to change the date and time I want to go back menu button menu button menu button and finally should take us back to our original home screen so off camera i've gone in and i've set the date and time however joe we know we've only connected one ct to this installation and i think when it comes from the factory you have to determine how many cts are being used i think it's in the advanced settings can we go in and check that yeah and this is a really important point because we've got one ct monitoring the grid power and we want to make sure that, that we only ever have one CT set per phase on, uh, on the grid there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the settings and then we're going to scroll down to other settings and then we're going to go to advanced. Now when you go into the advanced you know you're dealing with the big stuff because it's password protected. So uh, we'll, we'll volley in our super secret password. So that would be 0000, zero, zero, zero. that's the factory setting, so we can change that and we'll see how to change that a little bit later. We're then going to go down to CT config because we want to configure our CTs. And as you can see here, we've got two CTs, it's saying at the moment, that are connected to the grid. Well, we're using CT1 for the grid and on this installation we're not using CT2 at all. So what we need to do is go down to CT2. And if you look down at the bottom of the screen, you can see there a value for current and a value for power. So that's showing you how much current and power that current transformer is measuring at the present moment. And of course, because there is no CT2 connected, those are both effectively measuring zero. Now, if we look at the CT type, I think it's telling us here the type is grid. So if I press plus on there and then go to non, so you can see there that we have got no CT connected, press the enter button effectively and then we've got that set to none. So we can now go back out of the menu. We've got CT1 on the grid and CT2 not being used. And then we can just keep on going out of there until we get back to our display. So we dove into the advanced settings. In this installation, we've only got one CT around the incoming line conductor into the installation itself. So CT2 has been turned off. And what's really interesting is when Joe connects that CT next, you're actually going to see the kilowatts that the installation is drawing. So this here will actually show the amount of kilowatts being drawn by the installation itself when that CT is connected. So now you can see lines coming from the grid across into the house and you've got 0.1 kilowatts. Well, that's 0.1 kilowatts being drawn by the installation itself and nothing to do with the EV charging unit because nothing's plugged in at this end. So as we're cutting between uh, each take, you can see now that we've got 2.8 kilowatts being uh, used by the installation itself. Nothing to do with the car. It means the kettle's on, so me and Joe are getting a warm beverage in a moment. And by popping the kettle on or some other load in the house, you can verify that you've got your current transformer connected up correctly by checking that the arrows, in this case, are flowing from the grid into the installation. So we looked at in previous parts of the video presentation that difficult maximum demand and diversity calculation and we said that the Zappi is clever enough to work out how much current it is drawing and never go above a limit that we preset. Joe, is it possible you can show me that preset limit? Absolutely. So if we go into the menu and then we want to go down to other settings because once again we're delving into the advanced settings so we're through the looking glass now and then if we go to the first option on the advanced uh, section here, which is the supply grid. Now you'll notice that time I didn't have to put the pin code in and that's because we were just in this setting a moment ago and it's remembered that I'm allowed in here at the moment. So we'll go into the supply grid settings and then if we scroll down to where it says grid limit, we can see there that currently we've got the grid limit set to off. So if we go into there now 
and we can now set this to whatever we want it to be. So we could set the grid limit to 20 amps. For this installation, we're gonna set it to 60 amps. So we'll change that to 60 and that's quite happy. So what that now means, with that being set to 60, it means that the current being drawn into the installation may go above 60 amps. However, that will never be because of charging your electric vehicle, which means that it's very rarely gonna go above 60 amps for very long. And then all we've got to do is just come back out again, back to our home screen. So that's really clever, Joe, because the installation itself, according to the cutout fuse at 100 amps, could draw 100 amps. But at the minute we get to 60 amps, that the EV charging point is going to not draw any more current. So if it was to go onto full charge at that stage, you'd actually mean that it wouldn't charge the car up because it's limited at 60 amps. The installation itself could go on and draw 80 or 100 amps. That's really clever. The Zappi 2 has been installed on the exterior of the building. Now what's stopping somebody coming along, plugging into your electrical supply while you're at work and obviously charging their car? So we can set up a lock function and there's two ways this works. So we'll first of all access the menu. So if we go into the menu, down to other settings there and then look at lock function like that. You can see here you've got a number of options. You've got EV plugged, EV unplugged and then some other options here. So EV plugged, if you turn that on, that means that your plug will be locked into the unit when you're charging and it can't be tampered with. If you activate EV unplugged, then that means that when you have no EV connected, it will not allow someone to come and start charging their car off your supply. Now that's the one that I'm interested in enabling here. So if I go to EV unplugged, go to plus, and you can see that we've changed that now. So that is on. So that means that a random stranger can't come up, connect into my Zappi 2 and start charging their car using my electricity. So you'll want to change your lock code to a number that is memorable to you. So if you again just go into plus, you can then change the numbers. You can use the numbers one to four. So those are the digits that you can use. So I'm going to use four, two, one, four, three. So that's a nice random uh, number that I'm going to use. So that every time I plug in my EV, I just need to put that pin code in and that will stop someone from tampering with that and robbing my electricity. And you can see in the middle of the screen there, just next to the Zappi symbol, there's a little padlock that's come up and that indicates that the Zappi charger is now locked and someone would need to enter the pin code in order to start charging or adjusting any of the settings inside there. Is it possible you can explain to me what we mean by fast? So this is one of the three charging modes, and we'll speak about the other two in a moment. In the fast charging mode, basically the Zappi 2 charger will just find electricity from wherever it can and funnel that into the car. So it will draw whatever uh, green power is being generated, whether that's from solar panels or wind turbines or anything like that. But it will also draw electricity from the grid and it will just continue to charge until the uh, car has received its full charge. So that's fast. If I scroll up one, it changes now to eco. What's eco suggesting? So in eco mode, the charge rate is being adjusted all of the time. Uh, the car will continue to charge until it is fully charged. It will use whatever surplus power is being generated again from your green sources, uh, whether that's solar panels or wind turbines or things like that. However, if at some point the available green energy or green power falls below 1.4 kilowatts, then that will be bolstered by electricity from the grid. So it tries to use as much of the surplus energy you're generating from your green means, but it will be underpinned and supported by energy from the grid if that falls below 1.4 kilowatts, so that your car will continue to charge until it is fully charged. And if I scroll up once more, we go into Eco Plus mode. So in Eco Plus mode, the Zappi 2 charger will adjust the charge rate in order to limit the use of grid electricity, just like Eco mode. However, it will pause the charge if there is too much or if there is any grid electricity being used. And that differentiation depends on how you want your charger set up. You can tell it that you want to have 100% green energy. And then if your surplus power being produced by your solar panels, etc., drops below 1.4 kilowatts, then the Zappi 2 will pause the charging process until there is sufficient surplus power to start generating it again. It's also possible to change that percentage value if you want to uh, continue charging your car up if you don't think you're going to get above that 1.4 kilowatts being produced. However, that is set up within the menu 
and we'll look at that in an advanced video.